any government that can silence its critics has the has a license for any kind of atrocity. Can I just repeat that? Any and government that can silence its critics has a license for any kind of atrocity. Right. Put that on your refrigerator, because that's true. Uh, and then, you know, Hamilton, Adams, and Madison said that we put the freedom of speech in the First Amendment, because all the other bill rights are dependent on it. And sure enough, when the government found out, discovered that it could censor our speech in early 2020, silence doctors, silence mothers, silence people who were, or, uh, you know, people scientists who were saying, wait, there are other alternatives to what, we're do what you're doing. The lockdowns aren't going to work. The masks have no science behind them. The social distancing has no science. Those people were silenced. They were marginalized, they were vilified, they were demonized. And as soon as the government figured out that it could get away with that, it went after all of our other constitutional rights. The first thing it did is it, it went after the other leg of the First Amendment, which is freedom of religion. It closed every church in our country for a year with no scientific citation. It went after the third leg of the First Amendment, which is freedom of assembly, with these very bizarre social distancing regulations that, again, they now admit were not science-based. They went after, then, the Fifth Amendment, which is property rights. They closed 3.3 million businesses with no due process, no just compensation, no scientific citation, no notice and comment rulemaking, no public hearings, all the things that I've been suing governments and corporations for for 40 years, all the indicia of democracy that are... That, that government officials have to go through before they deprive us of rights, and none of that happened. And they went after the Seventh Amendment, which bans jury, which, which the Seventh Amendment gives us the right to jury trials. It's, the Seventh Amendment is very simple. It says, no American shall be denied the right of a trial before a jury of their peers in case there are controversies exceeding $25. That's all it says. There's no pandemic exception. And by the way, the framers of the Constitution knew all about pandemics. There were two epidemics during the Revolutionary War. One of them, a malaria epidemic that decimated the armies of Virginia, and then a, a smallpox epidemic that decimated the armies of New England at the very time when Benedict Arnold, who was our greatest general, conquered Montreal. So we were in the inner city of Montreal, we controlled Montreal, which meant we controlled Canada. And he had to withdraw his troops because he could not hold the city because so many of his troops were down with smallpox. Otherwise, Canada today would be part of the United States, but for that smallpox epidemic. And the framers all knew that. And when they gathered 10 years later, nine years later, Philadelphia to ratify the Bill of Rights, between the end of the revolution and uh, the ratification of the Bill of Rights in 1792, there were epidemics in every city that killed tens of thousands of people, malaria epidemics, smallpox, yellow fever, typhus, typhoid, cholera. So they all knew about epidemics, yet they did not put an epidemic exception in the Constitution. They wrote that document for hard times. They, One of the things, you bring that up, Bobby, and I think one of the things we often fall into the trap of in an election year is to see, let's take the most important of those amendments, the First Amendment, through a partisan lens. Do we have a Democratic Party that has been using social media companies to silence speech through the back door that they could not through the front door? Absolutely, we have. Is that somebody we need, something we need to hold them accountable for? Absolutely. But I, but I think that if we're to... And this is one of the things I love about you, Tucker, is you're willing to challenge people 360 degrees. I don't care if you're Republican or not. Is yeah, you know, I had conversations with a number of Republicans in the last week who are railing appropriately 
against Brazil for its banning of X, which is preposterous, actually. This is a major Western, supposedly allied nation, the very people who claim that we want to stand for human rights and democracy abroad have nothing to say when it comes to Brazil banning a social media platform. But then I challenge some of these same people, because I know what their views are on this question, to say, geez, it seems sounds like a pretty bad idea for a government of a supposedly free country that just bans outright a social media platform because they don't like the way that it operates. And here's the part where we challenge our own people. That's exactly what the U.S. government has done with respect to a platform that I don't love that much. I don't like it. I don't like many aspects of it all. TikTok. But I do think that we live in one of these moments where the trap in an election year, this is one of the things I loved about your candidacy, Bobby, is leaving the Democratic Party to run as an independent allowed you to do what more of us in either party need to be doing is question the orthodoxies of both parties and go back to first principles of what's in the U.S. Constitution. And you gotta have the same shoe fit the other foot, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. And that's one of the things I loved about the way you ran your campaign, man. Thank you for that. Uh, I saw Vice President Harris this week uh, gave a, a statement where she said that, um, she said two things. She said one, that, that uh, Elon Musk better watch out because if, because if he abused free speech on Twitter, that he would get that privilege taken away from him. It's not a privilege. And, yeah. Oh, it, 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 and it isn't a privilege, as you know, it's a right. And, and she said, he gave a press conference in which he said that these companies need to be punished we're putting disinformation and misinformation and hate speech up on the internet. And uh, the thing is, with the, and, and, and Vice President candidate uh, Waltz said the First Amendment does not protect disinformation and misinformation. But, but that's not right. The First Amendment protects disinformation and it protects misinformation, and it protects lies. It protects all speech. It was not written for the speech that we all want to hear. It was written to protect the speech that nobody wants to hear. And it was... And, you know, we have... Uh, the Democratic Party, the party I grew up in, and the word liberal is a derivative from of the of, a, of the term for free speech. So that was the central core of this party when I was growing up. My father, my uncle, loved this country so much because of the, they loved the the freedom to debate, have conversations, a free. It's, this idea that the, the free flow of information was the was the sunlight, it was the soil, it was the it was the water for democracy, and without it, democracy would wither and die. They knew that. Oh, I have a case right now against the Biden administration, and I was just granted a, an injunction in the federal courts, <laughs> Kennedy versus Biden, and Judge Doty, the federal judge in that decision wrote in the earlier decision, he wrote a 155-page decision that details what we now know about the Biden White House's censorship program. And what Doty details in this is that 37 hours after he took the oath of office, swearing to uphold the Constitution, which is, includes the First Amendment, he can opened up a portal and ordered the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, to begin censoring his political critics. And uh, on medical information, but also other information as well, including criti criticism of the Ukraine war. And I was the first person that they began, that they ordered Facebook to censor. Facebook actually pushed back at one point and said, 
you know, they, they, Facebook complied and took down my entire Instagram account with almost a million followers. But they couldn't find a single factual misstatement, error, on my Instagram account. And Facebook, during the email exchange, which we now have, pushes back at one point and says, this is actually not factually erroneous. And so they had to coin a new word, which was malinformation, which is information, factual assertions that are technically correct, but are nevertheless inconvenient for the government. And they ordered Facebook to, to censor misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. So that portal which they opened, they, the Biden White House turned over to the FBI to manage. So you have the FBI participating in the censorship of American citizens engaging in political speech. The FBI then invited the CIA, CISA, which is a group that you may not have heard of, but it is the center of the censorship industrial complex. The DHS, the IRS, which I don't know what they were censoring, <laughs> and, uh, and NIH, CDC, and FDA to participate in this censorship project. And uh, I now have an injunction against the Biden White House from doing that to me anymore. Uh, Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.